Hey everyone, how you doing? It's Manny here. Thanks, Warren, for having me again to do uh, some chatting about some guitar work. I'm a guitarist, and I love guitar tones. And obviously, being a producer, you get to use, hopefully, get some cool gear and some cool mics. So I wanted to play some guitar, and I wanted to show people how to not necessarily always rely on using a plug-in. You have your hands, you have a guitar, you have an amp. And I love microphones and I love a preamp. So I have nothing else in between except for, you know, on the seat of your pants or seat trying to play guitar and sound good. So this is going to show you how to record guitars using a tube microphone, a U67. Uh, I have a 421, which is a standard. Also, I have a ribbon mic. I have a ribbon mic company called the Original Gravity Wave Microphone Company. But in the meantime, before we have our first ribbon mics, these modifications I've been doing is one of the ribbons, which is a figure eight. Um, so that picks up the front and the back. And then I also have a omnidynamic, a realistic mic. So four mics, and you're going to hear now what that makes. And then after that, I'll break it down to what each one meant to me and how I used them. But here's the fun part. That's just my opinion on how to use them. If you get these files and you want to mess around with it, you'll be You'll have a lot of fun with it because there's great stuff you can do. I want to show people how you could get a really great guitar sound using uh, multiple mics, not relying on plugins or doing something with reverb. The room that I have at my own spot is really dry. There's no ambience. There's going to be no echo. There's no hitting the guitar and hearing like this thing come back to you. So in those kind of situations, there's some cool tricks you can do to really give your room a cool vibe. That room in there is... Um, carpet, concrete, and then I have a whole wall of glass that looks out into downtown LA. Even though that's a beautiful thing, sonically, it's an interesting room for that. There happens to be a lot of low end in there, which is great, but technically on paper, it looks like it would be a terrible room to record in, but I'm actually blessed that it sounds killer. It was at the end of a session of another record, and I wanted to try out that thing we're talking about, about multiple mics on my rig. My guitar sound is really interesting and really unique, and it has a lot of challenges where it actually could be really terrible and totally oversaturated. Getting multiple mics helps me put that together. Uh, the mic setup was a U67 on one speaker, and the, uh, the actual amp was called a Twin 12. It's a Sears amp. It's a really old tube head. Um, I had it rec recapped, so now it's kind of like back to new. Uh, guys that would have used that would have been like John Frusciante. Um, they're part of collections of a lot of guys that just love old school heads. So if you can see a Sears Twin 12, if you buy one, I recommend getting it recapped. Um, it has a 212 cabinet that's open back. I didn't mic the back of it. Sometimes I do that, but for this one, I didn't mic the back of it. Um, in retrospect, I probably should have. And it's 12-inch speakers, and I think they're Jensen's. I think they're vintage as well. They may have been even the ones that came with it. Uh, so I have a U67 on one speaker. On another speaker, I have a Sennheiser 421. And then right next to the 421, I have a ribbon mic in figure eight. Uh, it's an interesting ribbon mic because I've been modifying microphones. And I do have a microphone company called Original Gravity Wave Microphone Company. But... This is not one of our prototype. It's just a ribbon mic I've gotten and I've modified and I've changed some things in it to make it sound a little bit more forward mids and a little bit opened up. So you can hear that. And then the last mic um, is one of my favorite mics and I'll get you the model number for it. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's a Realistic, which was Radio Shack, made in Japan, probably in the 70s or 80s, uh, Omni microphone. And because that room has its 
challenges as far as making it sound good. I put it on the highest end I have and I have it facing towards the roof. So if the amp is right here, probably about three or four feet up in front of the amp, it just goes straight up into the roof. I've never been one to like to get reflections where I put mics in the corners off of walls, but just by accident, I happened to just come across that in this room with the concrete ceiling uh, and then having a loud amplifier, it sounds killer. Now you would say then, why would you do this? A lot of times when I record bands, I don't get a second chance. So if you have a band come in and you're recording and you don't know what the guitar player is going to bring to you through his amp, it could be effects pedals, it could be anything, having multiple microphones of different types is totally uh, saves your life. For instance, like the 67 is classic, like the Beatles. But if the guy oversaturated or hits it too hard, the 421 can take up that. If it's a little bit harsh, the ribbon mic can roll off some of that aggressive tones. If you find yourself in that situ situation and you do have enough inputs, or if you're doing overdubs and you don't know what the guy is going to throw at you on the guitar, then, then it's really useful to do that. The last thing is I do care about guitar sounds and guitar tones. So obviously I'm using a vintage amp, which is going to be giving me a certain amount of sound. My guitar is a Aria Pro, 1960s Aria Pro. It's technically a terrible guitar, but in the pickup is a 1971 Gibson Mini Humbucker, which is unreal. And then I run that into an 80s uh, Rat pedal. And then a brand new, uh, not brand new, but it's a new pedal is by Earthquaker Devices called a Tentacle. I think they have a Tentacle 1 and a 2. This is a 1. And then I run into an old Ibanez delay, and I'll have a, we'll have some pictures of it so you can see them. It's called a DDL. I think it's an 80s delay, and it, its trick was it has four knobs. One's like a little sample and hold knob on it. But we'll have a picture of all those so you can see them. And then lastly was a probably a 60s or 70s Echoplex. Even though I'm not playing guitar or demonstrating for you, and you would say, why would someone even use all that stuff? is that if you have an old rig like mine, or if you have a two head, if you have an Echoplex, an EP3, it uh, boosts your guitar. So if you just turn it on and you don't use it, Jimmy Page did that, Eddie Van Halen did that, and they don't talk about it, but it really does, like as far as on my rig, if I have the EP3 switch turned off, I lose probably about five to 6% of gain or feel. So that all totally helps me sound better than my original guitar tone. So I'm gonna play it now. I'll play it with all the mics on and then I'll break them down to how it worked out. On this one, I'm kind of leaning on the ribbon a little bit. If you get this and you can upload this yourself, you can mess around with it, but it's really awesome because instead of using an EQ, I'm basically flowing in different mics to add top end, uh, bottom end, and then the room mic can engulf the mix so it makes it feel not so mono and not so small. Let's go to the U67. So I'm gonna play just that and I have it coming out onto the right side, and then I have the rooms on the left. But for right now, you'll just hear it coming onto the right side. And um, this is the uh, U67 uh, going into an API. So that one, if you can tell, it's a little sizzling. I mean, it's a tube amp. So then I'm going to play the same thing now. And this is going to be the 421, which is a dynamic. Here's the 67. Now I'm going back to Dynamic 421. So as you can tell, those are completely two different sounds. And that's the fun part about it, because you can control, if you do a multiple mic setup, and when you're mixing, you can just bring up different animals, kind of, you know, tigers and lions and bears of sound that you can make a guitar sound cool. So now I'm going to add all three and then I'm going to play from the top again. 
And I'm going to start again with the, now this is the ribbon mic, which is going to be figure eight, a little bit darker, kind of a little bit deeper, but I'll go through all three of them. So right now, this is the figure eight, uh, starting, the, starting off this take. <laughs> Now here's the 67. Here's the 421. Here's the ribbon. Sixty-seven. It's a four twenty-one. Here's the ribbon. The one thing which I love about all those. Now you can say, "Oh, the ribbon's big," but you know, there's bite and there's really cool definition in the 421 and the 67. The ribbon obviously is huge. It cuts a little bit of that, you know, those teeth that sometimes uh, you'll get with a, a tube mic or a, a dynamic. But now you have the possibilities of doing all three of them. So now I'm going to blend all three in and um, you'll hear them all back. And I'll take some out and, and, and pull some in. But Technically, you can now build your guitar sound. Uh, the ribbon mic is going to be leaning on some of the low end and thickness. The 67 will bring up some of the point, and the dynamic just kind of goes right in between those two. So here, here it is with all three in. So I just took out the 67. I just removed the ribbon. So that's the 421. So if you only had one mic up, that's what you'd have. Now I'm gonna add them all in. And now you have a bigger guitar sound. the 421 by itself. Now it's just the 67. Now it's just the ribbon. Now, one thing, when you do guitar sounds, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously, I love ferocious guitars, and some of my favorite bands, and I've always heard, there's always this amp or this low end, like Eddie Van Halen would have it at certain moments where you hear the, almost the room swell with low end. And that's what's really cool about using multiple mics. At the end, you can't really tell until the guitar dive bombs that you can grasp how much low end you're getting out of it. So... These 67s, um, 421s are kind of here, and the ribbon just has that little bit more bottom, but it may not have as much top as, as that's why people love, um, you know, condensers. You know, they want more 
top end. And, and even though ribbons are beautiful, they're really good for crooners or horns and saxophones. Things sometimes you want to take the edge off. Um, so now we're going to talk about the room mic. So I think I got a great guitar sound going out of this speaker, and it sounds, to me, to my ears, uh, I'm super proud of it, you know? Not because I played badass, but it actually sounds really good. <laughs> it doesn't sound terrible. Um, but the room is important, because now, like, if you listen to Van Halen records, there's always, like, an echo chamber to one side. Of course, you know, that, you know, there's just proven to sound awesome. So I'm kind of segregating the microphones that are... Uh, up close this side, and then I want this side of the of the speakers to have the ambience or the room. So here's the room mic by itself. And like I said, if you look at it, I've delayed it a few milliseconds, and that's up to you on how much or how less you want to delay it. Uh, I'll show you another little trick after too that's really cool um, that that people very rarely use, but in digital world, it's really awesome. So here's the mic by itself. And I'm going to add in the 67. Now bring in the 421. Some people would be crazy over that noise, but I, I always feel like when eruption ended, you can hear all the amps on 10. So don't be scared of just things making it sound organic. One thing they do consider when you get big guitar sounds like that, sometimes it doesn't work with big drums and big guitars. So there is a, a yin and a yang of what gives and what's not. If you have a track that's sparse and there's maybe two or three musicians, you can really go far with doing this kind of technique. But if you have something with a lot of overdubs, it doesn't necessarily work all the time. So that's the only disclaimer. Okay, so now here's something that's cool you can do without any kind of uh, delays on the room. But you can make the guitar sound really spectacular. So uh, I used to do this on an old system that when I would get at the end of the mix, it would be, I couldn't even add any more plugins and I'd want to do something freaky on the guitar. And it kind of showed me through, you know, just through accident doing something cool. So now, this is the room mic, and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to duplicate it two times. So now I have three of the same thing. So there's no delay on it, which I was giving it that little milliseconds depth because the mic is literally straight up above the amp. There's not a delay time. So I'm just trying to expand it like the mic is 10 feet away as opposed to being literally right above it. So on the first one, I'm going to start to move it uh, manually out of time. And you can hear it start to give that cool uh, ambient sound. I'm going to play it with the 67. So now you can hear them both come in in time, and I'll start to move one out. So I'm going to slip it back just a little bit. So what I've done, I've just slipped them all back in time. And as I bring them in, you'll start to hear the sound kind of start to get wilder. But um, I'll show you another trick after this one. But this is 
only on the room mics. So I've kind of made an echo chamber and if you have the tracks and I know and you're not putting any like plugins on it and you want to get freaky with it, that's totally cool to do it. That's definitely for one. Then the next one, you can actually do it to the actual track, but um, it's kind of the same thing. So anyways, long story long, that's some fun stuff you can do with the guitar track. I hope that was useful for, for you guys. And um, I think the only thing I will let you, I'll let you know what I used on the actual track. So all the guitars had the same compressor. They have the, and also something cool, they had a de -esser. The compression that I used was a typical Waves 1176. It's a bluey. I barely have it using it. So I'm going to play the guitar without it, and then I'm going to engage it. And the only reason I used the 1176, I just wanted to add a little bit more intensity. It actually mellows out some of the ups and downs of the tones and keeps it from spiking. So I'm just technically using it just to kind of keep it all down. So here's a guitar without the 1176. So you hear me using it, I'm turning it in and out right now when you look at the screen. But it's not, you would think it's not doing anything, but for me, I can, at least on my speakers, I can feel it kind of adding a little bit more hair and harmonics to something that's going into a computer. The last thing that's really cool that I don't think people utilize on guitars enough is I always use the de -esser. There's sometimes like in Fenders or Marshalls, or even if I... There's a guitar player named Michael Limo that I've recorded records for, and he's an unreal guitar player, but he runs out of stack sometimes. And to contain some of the frequencies, um, I'll put a de on it. So on this one, I think I'm just cutting around 7K. And so I'm going to play it, and if you look at the screen, it should barely be kind of grabbing some of those frequencies, but I'm just doing it for my ears. It sounds better with it on. So here's with it on and then I'll go off and on and let you hear that yourself. You know, I think to me that sounds cool. And I'm not using it because, oh, I'm Mr. Smarty Guy. I just feel like the guitars sound better with a little bit of that edge taken off. And they sit better in the mix too. So you can mess around with that. And, you know, I wish I can say there was one frequency that would just do it all. But you have to experiment. Some guitars like Tallies to Strats to Big Body Gibsons, that may not work in that frequency because every guitar is like a fingerprint and an opinion. Everybody's got one and they're all different. I mean, just have fun with it. Put some mics up on it. And also, uh, lastly, was phase. When I put those mics up, sometimes when you put three mics up, you're going to have a problem for whatever reason. If one mic's out of phase with these two other ones, it's not going to work. I, I, On those three, they worked. So I didn't have to flip any phase on them. The 67 was in phase with the ribbon. The ribbon was in phase with the 421. The 421 was in phase with the ribbon and the 67 as the 67 with the ribbon and the 421. That's important. If you put those up and your guitar loses all its steps, one of those out is, is out of phase. And don't give up. Maybe just find out which mic is not working with the other ones. Remove it. 
And sometimes you can grab another mic and put it up there. And for whatever reason, a dynamic, a tube or a ribbon, uh, it will fit in better. But don't ever use a mic just because you want to use three and ones out of faith. It'll never work. Same with the drum set. Um, if your overheads are not in phase with your snare and your kick and one overhead's out, you're never going to get a great drum sound. So phase is definitely something you want to always think about and you can mess around with the... Every EQ has a phase switch on it. So just mess around with it and have fun. Anyways, um, I think that's it. Happy New Year's. I hope you dug it. I'm going to play this all. You can check it out with everything in.